From Gen 1 Pokemon murals to a free Elite Four ready Dragonair, this is 23 secrets in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So, um, we all know what these are, right? These murals located in Alphernada are actually overworld sprites from the original Pokemon Red and Blue. The old game cartridges didn't have enough space to actually have a sprite for every single Pokemon, so they just kind of lumped beasts and bugs and everything together. And while it's probably not exciting for everyone, it was a very nice and organically feeling touch that they added in for old players. And that's not the only Kanto reference we see in this game. Once you make it through the tutorial and arrive at the academy, there is a library full of fun Easter eggs. Like for example, this book referencing pewter crunches. Not found in red, blue, yellow, or fire red and leaf green, these were actually first implemented in Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu. It's also quite impressive, because it's not like this is a business or even something sold at a mart. Like there's literally just a dude selling cookies at the polka store, and he made it into a historical textbook. But there's more books than that. We've also got a book from Galar referencing the mural being destroyed in Pokemon Sword and Shield. There's also a reference to this character named Heath. He's the author of the Red History book in the Academy Library. And I'm not sure if this was meant to be arbitrary, but he does kind of resemble Heath from the anime, so it's a possible relation. You could also find another fun fact in the Hall of Fame Badge Awardee book. There's a lot of empty lines on that page, but the one character they did note that has beaten the game, I guess, is the Professor, which is kind of weird thinking they don't have the champion or other certain characters, but perhaps they're just on every pages. The references to other games, though, they keep coming. Located in Artisan Town, there are actually two structures that are references from Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. First, we have a whole bunch of meditative seats. So this was actually a base decoration in Auras that would make your screen go black for a second after sitting on it. The other and possibly more weird one is the Heterarchical Loop. This is another base decoration that you would put on the floor. When approaching it, your character would tiptoe around the outside of it. So while I don't really understand it, it is a fun reference to an older game. Have at me comment section. Which, by the way, if you want to enter a giveaway for a free copy of Scarlet and Violet, just subscribe, watch to the end of this video, and comment what your favorite secret on this list was. And I know someone's gonna put this next one. Okay, so there is a dude in like all the Pokemon games. Like, this is the dude. His first appearance is located outside of Professor Oak's lab in Generation 1. And he thinks technology is incredible. So that's right, the most well-traveled man in all of Pokemon returns to Gen 9. This time to tell you that the power of science is amazing. Now, another fun little thing you can do before you really even get off onto your adventure is get a different room phone case. So talking to this person will give you different Rotom cases based on whatever save data you have on your Switch. There's an Arc Phone for Legends Arceus, Ball Guy for Sword and Shields, Poke Etch for BDSP, and Pika V for the Let's Go games. And another early thing you might want to do is head to your mystery gift options. If you pre-order the game, you should have got a free Flying Terra Pikachu that knows the move Fly. This is especially cool because long ago, there was an event Pikachu given out that knew the move Fly. It's a fun throwback and something we actually talked about in another video. But speaking of rare and special Pokemon, one thing you should really know going into this is that there are lots of shinies in this game. Like, given all possibilities to enhance shiny odds, the best number you can come down to is 1 in 512. But even at your regular 1 in 4,000 base overworld, they are extremely common. Of five people I know who have beat the game already, four of their save files caught a shiny. So it's something you absolutely want to keep an eye out for. And actually, along that note, it's also good to know that Pokemon, when they're in Let's Go mode, won't actually attack shinies. If you press R to send your Pokemon out to get some XP, they won't battle it. But you can't save your game before the battle, and when you restart, it will still be shiny. Also, speaking of Let's Go mode, it is very important for another reason. At the start of the game, you don't have access to surf or high jumping, and there's actually a lot of inaccessible items in the first wild area. But if you send your Pokemon out in Let's Go, they will actually pick it up for you. But you can actually take this one step further. At the start of the game, there is an area skip in South Province Area 1 that gets you all the way to Area 4. This is an area that's not normally accessible until a bit later into the game, so it's a fun way to get to some otherwise inaccessible areas. And this is certainly not the only area skip you can perform in this game. So have you been seeing those purple ads all over the place for a makeup brand? Well, that's actually the seventh gym leader's makeup company. It's fun that they gave the gym leaders interests outside of Pokemon battling. 
but getting to Alfernada can be a huge challenge. I didn't know how to get there. On my first run through, I was heading down the path. I come to a big cave and I just, I, I don't know, I, I couldn't get up. Your transport, he doesn't jump high enough. And so then you probably came to realize that you need to face the third Titan in order to get the boost jump. But it turns out there is actually an alternate secret path to get there. Instead of heading down the path and into the cave, you basically just want to yeet yourself right completely off the cliff. Head on down until you're on a beach and you're going to see this weird sort of dangerous looking winding path heading up. Carefully follow that and you will eventually make it to a cave. And if you continue upwards along this path, the cave will eventually take you to this town without need of the jump boost. And I don't know if Game Freak intended people to know to get here, but it's just not well documented. But I think part of that is also my mind just being stuck in Pokemon linearity. You know, we're used to, oh, you need this before you can go there. But the game is actually full of routes to bypass areas. Like the path to the electric gym is blocked by Team Star. In typical Pokemon, you would have to beat them in order to progress, but not in Scarlet and Violet. From that Pokemon Center, if you just head the opposite way down to the beach, there is a very small area that your player can actually cross and make it to the city. The exact same thing happens on the route to the water gym. I'm thinking, okay, gotta fight these guys, but no, once again, yeet yourself off a cliff down into the desert and you can make it there and bypass the fight. So maybe I'm just a little stuck in my ways, but I'm also stupid. Because when I first encountered the Pokemon Knackly, I thought, oh, that's a cool name. It's a, it's a rock. Yeah. And uh, oh, Knackle Stack. I don't, I don't know what a Knackle is, but it's a rock. And then I saw Garganical. I was like, okay, well, what's, what's going on with this Knackle? Knackle is uh, N-A-C-L, which is the chemical compound for salt, because Knackly is a salt Pokemon and not a big rock. Now, Tinkaton is a Pokemon that has a seemingly more mysterious origin, and some people have been speculating that this Pokemon is actually a reference to Ukaid no Kazuki, which is supposedly a legendary Japanese magic hammer which can tap out anything wished for. It's a fairy tale, and Tinkaton is a fairy. What we know for sure, however, is that Tinkaton has got a very cool move. So discounting self-destruct and legendary moves, Tinkaton has actually been given the highest base power damage move in the game. The still type 160 base power gigaton hammer. It can only be used every two turns, but watch out for it because it will one shot you. But crazily enough, that is not even the highest base power move in this game. And that's because the new Pokemon Mousehold gets Population Bomb. This is a damage dealing normal type multi strike move, but we're not talking two to fives. This move can strike 10 times consecutively, meaning its total potential base power is 200. Well, and while it's not the best Pokemon, that is a lot of damage. You know what might be the best Pokemon though? Palafin. Located on most beaches, Palafin evolves into a Pokemon with near pseudo legendary stats. You need to level it to 38 in online for it to evolve. On evolution, it won't look that crazy because it needs to swap out to turn on its ability. Zero to hero, which gives it legendary like stats. Also, if, if you knew that, there is a very fun Palafin photo stand cardboard cutout in Porto Marinata. But in my opinion, there is a cooler Pokemon you can get in the game. So this region is packed with preset Terraform mods. You can find them as early as the first gym, like this Terra Flying Meowth, but the late game has some incredibly powerful options, like a Ghost Houndoom. But the best one we've been able to find is a level 54 Electric Terra Dragonair, and this thing comes complete with the moves Rain Dance and Thunder. Now, you won't be able to use it until after the seventh gym, but if you're looking to add some heat to your team for the Elite Four, this is an incredible option. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and comment your favorite secret to enter the giveaway.